Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. Today, I got a pretty special request. Somebody found some cool-looking artwork online, and we're going to be taking a look at how to create this really neat image manipulation, this sort of building manipulation effect here in Photoshop just from stock photos. If you're interested in following along, well, check it out down there in the description. There are links for the three stock photos that I'm using. They're free. They're from unsplash.com. And as it would be, I think I found the exact stock photo of the buildings that was used in the original artwork. Crazy, right? Uh, if you do enjoy this tutorial, hey, subscribe to, the, my, uh, to my YouTube channel so you never miss any Photoshop tutorials in the future. Let's jump in and check this thing out. Well, all right, all right, here we are in Photoshop. And the first thing that I want to do is duplicate my background layer by hitting Command or Control J. Then I'm going to come over here to my Channels panel. And I'm going to duplicate my red channel here just because there's the most contrast between my buildings and the sky. So you can see the buildings are the darkest there. Drag this down onto the new channel uh, icon there. And then hit Command or Control L. What that's going to do is open up the Levels Adjustment here. And I'm going to play with Levels Adjustment in this case. I'm going to pull this over. I really want to try to make the buildings, I basically want to get them as close to being solid solid black as possible while making the sky pretty much as solid white as possible. So something like that I think will work pretty well. Maybe I can darken the buildings up even more. Yeah, something like that looks good. I'll hit OK. And to just uh, pump up this effect even more, I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to set the blend mode of the brush to soft light. And I'm just going to paint with some large, softer hard edge brush, doesn't matter. I'm painting with the color black, and I'm going to paint over the buildings. So this is basically going to take dark pixels and make them even darker. It's just going to help kind of cover some of this stuff up even more without necessarily damaging the sky. So I can just brush over this real fast. And you can even flip your foreground and background colors by hitting the letter X and go through and paint the sky white a little bit if you felt the need to do that. But I think for my purposes, this selection is good enough. And you'll see, we're going to change the sky and everything because I think it'll work well. All right, I'm going to hit the little eyeball icon here to turn my composite RGB layer back on and then shut our little red copy channel off. And then I'll make sure I select my composite RGB layer as well. So we're working on the good stuff here that we should be working on. So the first thing I want to do here is split this layer in two, so this duplicated layer. I'm going to do that by grabbing my rectangular marquee tool and dragging a selection roughly over half the image. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll go layer new, and we're going to say new layer via cut. That's going to, you can see, split our layer just like that. Now what we can do is go select, and I can say, hey, look, load selection. And we're going to say, yeah, that, uh, that red copy channel that we created, use that as our selection. You can see it's selecting all the white pixels in that channel, all that center area of the sky. And we're going to mask that away on this layer too. doesn't look very different. It's not going to look at any different because all the image underneath is going to show through. But just hang with me here. Hold down Alter Option and hit the new layer icon at the bottom of your layers panel. It's going to apply a layer mask. And then we just want to duplicate this layer mask down to the layer beneath it. We can do that easily. Again, hold down the alter option key and just drag that layer down and drop it on the bottom layer you can see it doesn't look like anything changed but if we shut off the background layer we now have these buildings sort of isolated now I want to select both these layers by shift clicking them and then we're gonna go edit we're gonna choose free transform here and I want to rotate these guys upright so I'm gonna hold down shift find the little rotatey roo arrow and just rotate them upright just like that very cool and now that I've done this I'm gonna look for kind of an area where they can join together so I'm gonna select just the buildings here on the bottom you can see these are the bottom buildings in fact to keep it simple I'll drag it below so we can see here are the bottom buildings and I'll grab my move tool right here and then I can just simply use my arrow keys and nudge until the building looks like it's where it should be I think what I'm gonna try to do is line these corners up and that would mean here that this corner needs to line up over here as well so I'm gonna nudge this up and maybe I'll bump it over to the left a little bit. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control T to load in free transform again. And I'm just going to straight up drag it over to the left. Maybe I'll overcompensate a little bit and then shift it back over to make sure everything lines up. Something just like that I think will work. Maybe I'll stretch it a little bit further on both sides like that. I think that's good. We're going to mask it all to make it look right in a minute. Let's go up to the building on top and I'll do something similar just to get it lined up. Alrighty, I think that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, I'll select both these layers, and we're going to hit Command or Control E to merge them together. I'm going to select the background layer. We'll hit the little lock icon to, uh, to unlock it. And then we can go back to our Channels panel, and you can just Command or Control click on this uh, little channel as well. So we'll load that as a selection again. And we want to knock the middle of this sky out. And we're going to do that with a mask again. Hold down Alter Option, click Add a New Layer Mask, and boom, we've knocked out the sky. Now the buildings don't look perfect because we haven't sort of meshed them all together yet. But let's start to build our sky, and then we'll kind of correct everything uh, as we go here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer, but I want to create a new layer below the, the old background layer. So I'm going to hold down Command or Control and hit New Layer Icon, and we'll name this Grad Sky Base or something like that because we're going to grab our Gradient Tool, 
and I'm going to go with just a straight black to white gradient, hit OK, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Maybe I'll start with black way down here, hold down shift, drag straight up to like right there. You can see we just have like a nice, what's going to be the base for our sky. And now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and load this as a selection. So I'm going to command or control click right on that mask. Now all the areas that are selected, we actually want to delete these parts of the top and bottom buildings, right? So in order to do that, we want to alt or option click the new layer mask icon. It's going to fill those areas with black and it's going to sort of splice our buildings together. Now we do have some issues, right? It's not like perfect along there. I think that'll actually be fine because we're going to colorize this in a moment, but down here at the bottom, this needs some help. This does not look very good at all. So what, what I think we'll do here is we will go ahead and take our polygonal lasso tool and I'm just going to say look I'm going to draw a line right off that corner of the building let's just draw something down sort of like this maybe I'll zoom out a little bit here I'll draw something down sort of kind of maybe right there and then I'll take my selection right back around just like that and then what I want to do is fill this with white because we want to reveal the bit of building to sort of cover that weird funky you know there's this weird scaffold stuff there and just get rid of all that so we want to fill with white so I'm gonna make sure I hit the little arrows make white my foreground color and then use the hotkey option delete that's alt backspace to fill that with white and then command or control D to deselect it looks a lot more natural now all right we'll do the same thing on the other side it looks you know as natural as as this type of effect will look all right, so we'll go ahead and select maybe this little bit here, come right through here, boom, and again, we'll fill that with white, and we're working here on the layer mask, so I'm filling with white on that layer mask, and you can see now, it looks pretty seamless, it looks pretty natural, uh, things are looking up for us. We have a pretty glaring problem, and that is if we zoom in, we have all this nasty, grungy fringing. I don't mind all the speckly stuff in the windows. Of course, if you really wanted to clean that up, you could go into the layer mask, and you could do that by alt-clicking on the layer mask, and just painting white over all of this. And if you're doing this job for a client, you probably should, but for this tutorial, we're going to, we'll pretend like that doesn't exist. But what we can't pretend doesn't exist is this nasty fringing, because that's going to be really, really noticeable. So what we'll do is we're going to apply these layer masks. I'll right-click on the layer mask and choose Apply Layer Mask and you can see it just essentially destructively erases all those pixels on the layer. I'm going to right click on this one and say apply that layer mask as well and I am going to apply a defringe. So I'm going to go layer and I'm going to choose matting and I'm going to choose defringe and watch these edges on the buildings on both sides and we'll defringe this. I don't know. Let's go two pixels. Hit OK and you can see boom. Look at that. Just took it right away. We're going to take the buildings on the top and bottom now. Let me zoom out just a touch and we'll do the same thing. We will go layer. We'll go matting and we'll go defringe and I'll say, yeah, let's do two pixels. That worked pretty well before. Boom. It's not perfect, but I think it'll be good enough for what we need to do uh, for our effect here. So we've cleaned up our selection. We've created the basis of our optical illusion. It's begin. It's the, the, the time to begin adding some other visual elements. And the first step that we'll do is add a layer above our grad sky base by hitting the new layer icon. And we're going to throw some clouds in here to add some texture to our sky. It looks too perfect, too smooth. We'll go filter, render, and choose clouds. And our foreground and background color is black and white, so we're going to get some black and white uh, poofy clouds, sort of digital clouds. And then we'll go filter, blur, and choose motion blur. And I want to apply a pretty, uh, a pretty aggressive motion blur here. We'll go with an angle of 90 degrees, just straight up and down, and a distance of 100 pixels is looking good. And then we'll just set the opacity simply to 20%. And you can see what this is going to do. It's a very subtle effect, but it just adds that little bit of realism we need to our sky. And one of the other uh, one of the other stock photos you'll download is this airplane. Now, if you don't know how to use the pen tool, you can really use any any selection tool that you want. But what I'm basically what I'm going to do is select half the airplane and duplicate it and flip it and create a new airplane. And you'll see exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna loop a quick pen tool selection around this. I'm drawing with the pen tool to make a path and I'm gonna just draw my selection real, real quick here. And the quick hotkey to convert a path like this to a selection is Command, Return, or Control, Enter on the PC. You can see we've got a nice selection here with the background. We're gonna do that same new layer via copy trick. Layer, new, new layer via cut. Did I say copy? I meant cut. Uh, well, I guess you could do copy. What am I saying? But here we go. We've got our half airplane. We're going to duplicate this up to a new layer. Command or Control J. We're going to hit Command or Control T to free transform. And we're going to set our anchor point to the center right, just like that. Then I'm going to right click on the selected airplane and I'm going to say, hey, flip this horizontal, just like that. Commit the change. And we've got this little one or two pixel line down the middle of the airplane. Just nudge with your left arrow key until that's together. And we've got one solid airplane. Select both layers by shift clicking them and hit Command or Control E to merge them together. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a beautiful little airplane that we can now drag over to our other image and drop it in place. Once I've done that, 
I am going to right click on this layer and choose to convert it to a new smart object and I'm going to name this airplane. I'm just converting it to a smart object because I'm going to throw some adjustments on it that I want to be editable and I also want to be able to resize the airplane uh, back to the original size if need be. Command or control T and we're going to hold down shift and option and I'm going to make this airplane pretty small. So I'm going to just zoom it way down and obviously it looks pretty fake because it's so bright and blue and everything like that. So the first thing we'll do is go image adjustments and I'm gonna choose hue saturation and I'm just gonna desaturate it just like that. Now these adjustments, because we're applying them to a smart object, they're just gonna stay there. They're non-destructive. And we'll also go image adjustments levels. And basically I'm gonna drag the white point down to really darken the airplane up and also reduce contrast. And then I'm gonna open up the shadows. So I want the airplane to be really, really dark and I really wanna do away with just about all the detail on the bottom of the plane. If there's a little tiny bit left, that's fine. But I want it to be very, very difficult to distinguish detail on the bottom of the airplane, just like that. I'm loving it. And now that we have that, it's time to add another visual element, and that would be the moon. So let's just drag this over. And this is gonna be pretty simple to mask out. It's huge. Uh, what I'll do is I'll hit Command or Control T, and let's just hold down Shift and Option again. Scale this way down. We're gonna have a nice little moon, and I'm gonna rotate it over like that so the moon looks kind of straight. Uh, as if the airplane is sort of flying into the moon. Use your arrow keys to nudge it into place. Come, uh, enter or return to commit that. And this is going to be pretty easy here. I'm just going to rename the layer real quick. I'm going to set this to the blend mode of screen. And uh, it does a pretty, pretty flawless job of just kind of doing all the masking work for us. So I kind of like that. Let's add some uh, let's add some trails to the plane. Some would say chemtrails, Alex Jones. Uh, but uh, let's add some trails to the plane here by creating a new layer beneath the airplane layer by hitting new layer. And we're going to call this uh, stuff because, hey, who knows what it is? Let's go ahead here and drag out a, a narrow selection, kind of like this. And I'm dragging it out nice and long so it even would go sort of behind the buildings here. And I'm going to fill this with white. So let's go edit. Let's choose fill. And from the drop down menu, I'm just going to choose white and I'm going to hit OK. And then Command or Control D to deselect. I'm going to grab my selection tool and just nudge this over, kind of place it right behind the engine, just like that. Let's blur this first because it'll change the way the effect looks. Let's go filter. I'm going to say, hey, blur, and I'm going to go Gaussian blur. And 10 pixels is perfect. Let's go 10 pixels, hit OK. And now hit Command or Control T, right click, choose perspective, and let's pinch together the top. So we're going to really pinch it fine, and then we'll widen up the base quite a bit. Whoop, we don't want to move it. We just want to, we just want to widen the base. There we go. Something then kind of sort of like that I like it and uh, then I'll probably move this downward a little bit just like that just so it's kind of you know just coming out of that airplane's engine and uh, looking the way it should be let's add a layer mask to this layer by hitting the new layer mask icon and I'm going to grab my gradient tool we're going to use the black to white gradient and I'm just going to essentially darken up and make some of those trails disappear right as they come out of the plane. If you've ever seen a plane, you know, the, the trails don't appear right away because of the heat and everything coming out of them. I don't know. I'm not an aviation engineer. I'm just, this is my theory. They don't appear right away when they come out of the motor. That I know though. So I'm going to select this layer, Commander Control J to duplicate it, grab your move tool, and just slide this right over to create the trails for the uh, the second engine of the airplane. And there we go. We have those nice trails for the plane. You can select both these layers. You can reduce the opacity a little bit if you, if you feel the need. Uh, maybe the better way to go would be just set these to the blend mode of something like soft light. There we go. I think I, I think I might roll with that. I kind of I kind of dig it. And once we've done that, it's just going to be all about colorization and making this look the way you want it to look. So here's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to open up my adjustments panel and let's kick it off with a curves adjustment. Let's boost our shadows by dragging the black point straight up and dull our highlights by dragging the white point down. Essentially, we've just reduced the contrast of the image and then I'm just going to darken the darker parts of the image kind of like that. I kind of like that. Let's go ahead and add a LUT. Um, so I'm going to do a color lookup table and I'm going to go with a 3D LUT here. I'm going to go with one of Adobe's uh, defaults. That's the teal orange plus contrast. I think I kind of dig that. That's kind of neat looking. And lastly, I think I will go with a color balance adjustment layer. By the way, you can see the tops of these buildings, they're still they're just a little bit too bright. There's a little bit of fringy stuff we left in there. So that's the kind of thing you'll want to go over and you'll just want to really focus on knocking that stuff out. But we're not going to do that right now. I'm going to throw some more blue in here. Let's make this more of like a, I don't know, some kind of bluish bluish night as I add a little bit of red to counterbalance some of that. Let's go with the highlights. Let's add, do we want to add blue to the highlights or yellow to the highlights? Maybe a little yellow to the highlights. And just a touch of green. I'm thinking red. Or am I thinking cyan? I'm thinking maybe a little cyan in the highlights. And then for the shadows, let's pump some blue into the shadows. Let's pump a little uh, uh, magenta. Maybe not quite so much blue. And then what looks better? Red. Whoa, red really darkens things for us. Let's go with cyan just like that. 
That's kind of cool. I think something like that is kind of interesting. Something like that is kind of neat. And then lastly, let's do let's do two things. Let's add some finishing grain. So we'll add a new layer and I'm gonna fill it with 50% gray. So I'm gonna go edit fill and I'm gonna say, hey, look, uh, give me the 50% gray. And before I add any grain, I'm gonna duplicate this layer. In fact, I'll name it grain and then hit command or control J and I'm gonna name this new layer vig for vignette. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's go with the grain here and I'm gonna go filter, camera raw filter. And what we'll do here in the camera raw filter is choose the FX tab. And I'm just going to throw some grain in here. I'm going to go pretty heavy with the grain because I can always tone it back a little bit in Photoshop by reducing the opacity. Hit OK here. And let's uh, say, hey, set this to the soft light blend mode. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see there's just too much grain. That's fine. Let's tone back the opacity a little bit. Let me take it back to like 60-ish percent. And let's go ahead with the vignette layer. I'm going to select this. And once more, we will go filter, camera raw filter. And here in the camera roll filter, again, we'll go to the effects tab and I'm going to use the post crop vignetting. I'm going to make a pretty heavy vignette. I'm going to reduce the midpoint. I'm going to reduce the roundness and I'm going to increase the feather of it, something like that and hit OK. And all I have to do here is set this to the blend mode of soft light. It's going to knock out all of that 50% gray as well. And you can see the before and after for that. Now I'm looking at it. There's a little bit too much blue. So I could go into the color balance layer and tweak that. But I think what I'm going to do instead is just say, hey, uh, let's go with a gradient map, a black to white gradient map, very high contrast. And then just reduce the opacity of it and get the sort of, uh, get, get the sort of color that we're looking for in terms of just knocking down some of those blues, maybe something a little bit like that. And if it really bugs you, you want to make it a little warmer, you can go to the curves adjustment layer, go to the blue channel and just suck some blue out of the image and make it more of a warm, a more of a warm brown type thing. Maybe push some reds into it as well by boosting the reds in the red channel, something like that. And you can see you can totally change the way the image looks just like that. Well, there you have it. That's the final finished completed effect done right there in Photoshop. If you enjoyed it, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. You get a whole different side of everything that goes on here at tutvid.com over on the Instagram channel. That's at tutvid. You can follow with all the other people that are following there as well. So for this tutorial, using channels to create masks and all kinds of different adjustment layers, defringing, and just all the little things we covered here in this tutorial today, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds in tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.